time on your childhood, but I do want to talk a little bit about um, how you came to be. Yeah. So you grew up in the other Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, California. Yes. Yeah, which a lot of people don't <laughs> know exists. Nobody knows that. Yeah. Pittsburgh. <laughs> people only know it if they were grew up in the in the Bay Area and they ever took the Pittsburgh Bay Point train. Right. That's right. how people yes. know about it. It's that city on okay. on Bart. Yeah. And how how was it that? How yeah. Was so up there? so you know what? It's a really interesting paradox because Pittsburgh. I I have so many amazing things that came into my life from growing up in Pittsburgh. Like it's one of the most diverse cities in all of the United States. Really. I think at one point it was on like the top. 12 or something like that and even just in California um, and so what was interesting about that is I truly like when we were growing up we had I had Jewish friends I was I was the secretary of the Filipino American Club I'm not Filipino <laughs> but that wasn't that wasn't that weird. Wasn't odd. it wasn't yeah. weird like everybody was just mixed I was in quinceañeras like we did all these different things my best friend was Vietnamese so growing up with that kind of diversity was amazing because mm -hmm. it's kind of shows you this melting pot of what the world can be Right. I, I really genuinely, genuinely, when I grew, was growing up there, really thought racism was like non-existent until I moved out of there and moved to L.A. I really didn't know. Um, and so that's a big benefit. But on the, you know, shadow side of things, there was a lot of violence. You know, there are gunshot holes on the outside of the house that I grew up in. Um, grew up in a home with domestic violence. And, you know, something that I think a lot of people deal with is, is that and also alcoholism and my family and... And so there was a lot of trauma, a lot of love. My parents did the best that they could. They mm -hmm. tried so hard. And I think about how young they were, you know, when they 23. I can barely even imagine having a dog now, right. you know. Right. And, and my mom had me when she was 23. So it was just, you know, it was rough growing up in that environment. I think one of the, the toughest things was growing up knowing that I was gay at a really young age. I, honestly, people knowing I was gay before I even knew what gay was. And How, how did they know that? I have no idea. I guess it just comes bleeding off of me. But I, you I have actually, siblings. I have siblings. Okay. Yeah. Three others. Three. So I have three younger and one older. Okay. Yeah. And um, and, and you were different from them. In yeah. That way? Yeah, different. And this was the thing. I remember the first time, first, first, first time. I don't think I've ever told this story. I I remember the first time I ever got called gay, and it was when I was in second grade. I was on the playground and we were playing Foursquare and I had just switched from private school to public school because my parents got divorced and my mom couldn't afford private school anymore. And I'm on the playground playing Foursquare and it was like these fifth graders there and I'm a, the new boy at school. And they're like, oh, he gay, he gay, he mm. gay. And I was like so confused. I'm like, what's gay? Like yeah. I literally was asking people what's gay. And so they, the bullies, of course, go in on this joke and they're like, oh, it means you're happy. It means you're happy. So I start, my dumb ass, is, I mean, naive, start going, oh yeah, I'm gay. Mm -hmm. I'm gay, because I'm trying to be like, yeah, I'm happy to be here, I belong at this new school. So I'm walking around all day saying I'm gay, and everyone kind of knows, you know, that what's going on except for me. And I go home and go to my mom. Now imagine this, I go, mom, guess what? I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that didn't go well, you know? And so my mom was like, no, you're not, no, no, you're not, no, don't you ever say that. That's the disease that God gives bad people who are going to hell. And so, and you know, you're gonna get HIV. And, and I'm like, what's HIV? And she starts telling me about AIDS. And, so and how old are you? In second grade, in second eight. Grade. Wow. And so my first ever understanding of gay was that it was something that I needed to be embarrassed about, something people were joking about, something that God gave me because I'm a bad person, something because whatever. I didn't really know anything about it, but I just knew that everyone was calling me, whatever it was, mm -hmm. it was people were calling me it. And then right. when I came to understand more of what it was and realizing that that's who I was, I fought it for a long time, you know? And, and that was... I think one of the biggest challenges of my life, and I think what a lot of queer people deal with, is growing up, the thing that I practiced most, and I think most pe queer people, what we practice most is being someone else so that yeah. we can be accepted. Yeah. And so then for a lot of us, what our greatest life challenge becomes is learning how to be authentic and learning how to be our real selves because we've practiced our whole childhood learning how to shape shift so that we can feel safe, mm -hmm. so we can feel loved, so we can belong. And so, anyway, that's kind of the, the gay story, how it all happened.